Congratulations, you've just been admitted into an amazing college for study abroad, but what do you do next? There's actually so many steps you have to do from when you get your college admissions to when you actually start classes. Things like visa interviews, packing, travel. We've got a great video to help you figure out the whole post-admit process to until you actually start studying. And Shubman's gonna tell his story about how to do that. Friends, welcome to Chang Coaching. Rob here. We love helping international students and professionals be successful in their cross-cultural journey. I've been so lucky, been able to travel all over the world, experiencing so many different cultures, knowing what it's like to live and study abroad. We want to help you guys in that journey. So Shubham, go ahead and introduce yourself. So hello, everybody. I am Shubham Malpani. I come from Mumbai, India. I have done my undergraduate in electronics and telecommunication, and I'm here at Syracuse University to pursue my Master's of Science in Information Management. In my free time, I love to do some kind of stuff with the computer and play my musical instruments. Awesome. And Shubham, welcome to America. You recently came, just started this new semester, and I love that you're wanting to share your journey to help other students. Yeah, thank you, Rob. It is actually like a good thing for me to share my journey and maybe some people can benefit out of it. Totally. That is what trying coaching is all about, is sharing your stories to help each other out, learn from each other, prevent mm -hmm. those mistakes. And be sure to yeah. check out our other video with Shubham. He talked about his application process, choosing which country, whether US, UK, Australia, and he shares his application and shortlisting process, which is going to help you. So kind of go check out that part one video as well. It's really going to help you out. So again, Shubham, congratulations. You got your admit at Syracuse University, the Orange Man up there in New York, but there's a lot more you have to do. So what's the very first step? The next thing you should do as a student after you get your college admit for study abroad. So as soon as anybody gets an admit and they have decided that they have to come to this university, the first thing you do is get your I-20 form from the university. I-20 is basically a document saying that you are financially eligible and you have the means to pay for this degree. Usually the college has, or even every program has a different amount which they want for you to show. And um, so you can show it like there are many ways. Each and every college has a different requirement. So you do that, you get your I-20. For normally the I-20 comes directly to your home in Korea. But now because of COVID, uh, my I-20 was emailed to me and you can take out copies. So after you get your I-20, you can jump onto visa. Awesome. So yeah, I-20 is that magic document you need. And then you can yeah. apply for a visa. So talk about, yeah, what's the process? I know it was harder during the pandemic, but how did you get your visa interview and how did that go? So the visa interviews in India, they were actually stopped, I think, till the end of August from March. So when I was actually supposed to get my visa for the fall semester, that did not happen. So I was actually like filled out my DS-160, did the whole thing. And then luckily, there were so many students applying for visa and so little spots that I consider myself lucky that I got a visa quite early. My visa interview was on 19th October and um, the Mumbai consulate used to only open up 10 slots, 15 slots, and it was almost like a race where you had to run and get those visa appointments. Do you remember the questions that the officer asked you? So my visa interview was quite smooth. So the visa interviewer asked me only four questions. What I'm going to do over there? What is my undergraduate in? Do I have any backlogs? And what does my father do? And then there were golden words. Your visa is approved. Woo! Congratulations. Everyone loves that. <laughs> yeah, those are actually the magic words every student wants to hear. Yeah, I feel like even more than the application admit, getting admitted, getting the visa approval is even like a bigger sigh of relief. <laughs> yeah, because actually, like, this is a small message from me to all the students that visa act interviews for US are actually hyped in India a lot. People will say that you have to tell all these stuff. My suggestion to you guys will be stop reading the visa interviews that come on Facebook or whatever other platforms that you're using. People don't research properly. People don't think what they have to say. They just go for the visa interviews. Prepare yourself. Sit down. Write a pen. Ask somebody to judge you whether you are telling the correct things and not. Also, one more thing is speak only what is asked. Do not exaggerate or try to tell extra things. The visa mm. interviewer doesn't want to know all that stuff. Keep it simple. Those are some Keep great tips. Keep it simple, yes. Now, once you got the visa approval, which is probably one of the biggest things, how else did you have to prepare? What was the packing documents? What were those things like? So regarding the documents, I would suggest the folder which you are carrying on your um, visa interview day. Take the whole folder with you. 
also um, i would suggest that universities generally pre enroll the students for the first semester maybe a few courses do take a print out of it because like the chances are a immigration customs officer can ask you whether your course is hybrid or not depending on whenever you come secondly regarding the packing i would say make sure you have packing for all the seasons and also you can pack a lot of processed food what i did was basically i had an air india flight so i was allowed three bags so i packed two bags with clothes and one bag with all the food items some masalas some ready to eat stuff so that at least for a month or so you do not need to struggle for food as soon as you come here so that is going to be my golden tip for like packing and i would suggest is don't get a lot of clothes too sometimes you will find better clothes and better brands over here which are cheaper enough yeah especially for good winter clothes it's better to get those things here in america cuz you can get the good quality at good prices and it's going to be mm. proper to help you with the cold weather here so yeah like that thing played out in my favor like our landlord he actually allowed us to order all of our stuff during black friday at his home he lives close by over here so he allowed us to order a lot of stuff at his home so we ordered jackets gloves shoes then few other home essential items are mattresses everything we ordered at his place and he was kind enough to keep them inside our house oh amazing that's so helpful yeah, yeah. once you're all packed up and we've got some other great videos about packing tips on china coaching so be sure to check those out to get way more details of things what to pack what not to pack but travel you had to travel during the pandemic you know what was that like and what do students need to be aware of who are trying to come you know and still travel during a pandemic so my tip for you will be check your leaving countries documentation and the country which you are arriving to these things during covid they used to change every month new and new regulations used to come also a light, lot of flight cancellations and rescheduling take place so i had a bad experience here that my flight from mumbai to newark international airport was scheduled on the right time but then my onward flight they changed it to a flight no. that was just in 1 hour and that was impossible to get through immigration and stuff and unluckily or luckily one of my roommates father checked it and we found it 5 to 6 hours before leaving so at least we could get there and get our tickets rebooked but these things happen flight rescheduling is very common during covid times mm -hmm. also like i would suggest that when i came there was not a necessary requirement to get a covid test done but just for your safety and your peace of mind get a covid test done because um, i think you will be more safe when you come here because sometimes what happens is different states in us also have different quarantine rules for example in new york if you had a covid test done earlier we could exit the quarantine in just 4 days whereas if you haven't done you had to stay 14 days inside your house yeah so recently the us is also passing new rules about requirements for covid tests international travel so make sure you're updated with those yeah you should always keep on checking the state which you are coming one thing i found america is very good at that they have websites for each and everything it is almost updated very regularly so you can keep checking your university's website your state's website for more details and more info you guys need to do lots of your own research and also be flexible because things mm -hmm. change a lot and that's just how it is for right now but uh, you'll make it here eventually like shubham did <laughs> yeah. our chai question for you guys is what do you guys think is the hardest part of the preparation process is it the visa interview is it packing is it finding housing let us know in the comments what do you guys think is the hardest part of the process Shubham what was it for you what do you think so the hardest part for me was the packing or you can say the shopping for the packing i am living outside my house for the first time i have always lived in a joint family so packing a lot of things that i wasn't even aware that you need to keep these things it was a nightmare for me packing everything into yeah. and then balancing your weight at 50 pounds or 23 kg that is on the ball game and it's it's an art of packing everything just the right way to fit it all and it you want to give yourself plenty of time to do that mm, yeah so. so i took almost 10 days to do my packing and i was packing till the time i was coming i'm i'm notoriously a last minute packer so don't be like me plan ahead <laughs> and so shubham the very last thing to cover is this process is to finding housing settling down you know so you got the visa you got the flight travel plans now you have to have a place to stay so what does it look like to settle and find a home abroad in america basically whenever you get an admit into the universities from many sources you find you land into various whatsapp groups across 
the university's portal like sometimes it is a facebook group sometimes it's a whatsapp group but yeah you can find whatsapp group for majority of the universities and um, there you can find a lot of people you can put up messages like hey i am looking for a place whatever your requirements are you are a vegetarian house you are fine with three roommates whatever it is and you can generally find a lot of people there so i found my roommates all we are the whatsapp group of syracuse university and then for the housing like each and every place like i am not so sure but about for syracuse there is a website called orangehousing.com and then there's facebook marketplace so i would suggest as soon as you are done like at least 3 months before you you know you are coming here start looking for houses because the houses go up fast the good houses go up fast mm mm-hmm. so you need to find houses you need to speak with owners and you can actually negotiate a lot over here like our house we negotiated quite a good sum of money to get down and we could get a few things here and there too also like if you have friends in that university ask them to go and visit that place once because over here my couple of friends are struggling a lot with their houses because they just looked over and they bought it also i would suggest one more thing is you should check out the locality where you are going to stay i would suggest you not to stay somewhere inside where you can find a cheaper house and it is unsafe over there your safety is a bigger priority than your money you might want to spend extra 50 dollars but you can get a house at a bigger street or a main road something like that rather than a inside place also try to keep your house as near as university because walking here is more economical and quicker than either waiting for a bus all these points which i am telling they do apply to smaller towns if you are in a bigger city i think that won't be an issue you have metros you have other transports for smaller towns the you need to keep all these things in your mind. yeah most places in america don't have good public transportation so only yeah. a few places but yeah those are great tips um we've got some other videos on chain coaching as well to how to find and book and select your apartments how to set mm-hmm. them up be sure to check those out but yeah i agree with shubham you know safety is a priority you know whatsapp groups facebook groups are great ways to connect and find roommates or talk to seniors and get advice and then yeah, the other colleges all have their housing resources as well so you can easily find all that out. Well Shubham thanks so much. I've loved this conversation. Thanks for sharing your journey of the post admit process. Be sure to check out our other video as well about why Shubham chose to study in the US compared to UK and Australia and his admit process to come here to the US and study at Syracuse. And give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to Shubham and Shubham thanks again. This has been really fun. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if you guys have question please don't hesitate to either message me or you can message Rob to we can both help you out. Perfect. Yeah, we'll have Shubham's LinkedIn link in the description if you guys want to connect and learn more about Syracuse. Be sure to subscribe to Chain Coaching because we want to keep helping you guys thrive and succeed in your cross cultural journeys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time friends. Cheers. Thank you.